It's showtime. Hey guys, it's Missy. Welcome back. Today we are making this Beetlejuice cake inspired by this pop figure. to pop figures lately and because they have like a cartoonish look to them they are right up my alley. I printed out the image and then taped a piece of wax paper over it to transfer the image. I am going to alter the arms and legs slightly to make it work for this project. I then cut out the transfer and laid it over my cooled 9 by 13 inch cake and then cut around it. I went to work cutting away the excess around the head lowering the hairline and then softening the edges. Some spots broke off in the process so I just repaired those areas with some cake pop mix. I carefully gave the cake a good crumb coat and put it in the fridge for about an hour to chill out. I rolled out my white fondant and then unrolled it over my cake. I pulled out the edges and then smoothed down the sides with my hands and my fondant tools. I cut away the excess and cut his head off his body and removed his eyes from his head. That sounds disturbing, yes? But this is Beetlejuice and Beetlejuice needs to be disturbing. Next, I placed the eyes onto purple fondant and cut around them. These are going to serve as sort of a foundation piece to hold all the eye pieces together. Next, we're going to remove the eyebrows and cut around those pieces onto black fondant. I applied two round circles in the center for his eyes and then placed the eyebrows right on top. And there you have it, brows on fleek. To make sure that I didn't make his eyes all wonky and crooked, I laid my template of his head onto the head portion of the cake and applied the eyes with a little bit of water. I wanted to make his teeth as close to his teeth in this image as possible, which means the bottoms needed to be rounded. So I used the larger end of my tips and cut out half circles from white fondant. I then straightened the sides and began placing them onto his black smile that I created with the template of his face. I needed a little help with the exact placement of each tooth, so I used my online photo as a guide as my printout was too pixelated to see where everything sits. I added a little tiny nose to finish him off. I give you his face. For his shoes, I cut out two large rectangular pieces and stuck them to the bottom of each foot. I added a strip covering the front and sides of each shoe as well. To add a clear separation from his jacket to his pants, I added two white squares just under his head and two triangular pieces for the collar of his jacket. I added a belt for the separation of his pants and placed a tie right in between the two collars. I then went to work adding thin strips of black fondant to all sides of his jacket and pants, doing my best to keep the stripes spaced evenly apart. For his wild hair, I added blocks of bright green fondant over each section of his hair, cutting each one down, smoothing, and pinching with my fingers before cutting off the excess. I then dragged my fondant tool through his hair to add texture, which is always fun because it helps bring the character to life. Lastly, I added that green gook that Beetlejuice has all over his face. That piece de resist, no, piece, piece de, de resist, wait, sort of the piece de, no, duh. Wait, that's the French thing. This is why I had trouble in French class. Yeah. Kind of that piece de resistance. To really bring this whole look together, so now we need to call him three times to get him to show up. You ready? Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Our Beetlejuice cake is complete. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please give us a big thumbs up. 
If you are new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you know whenever I post a new video. I love you guys and I'll see you next week for our last Halloween video together. Bye-bye.